Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. We're back today with our seventh episode of the Transfer League. This time we're taking over Everton. If you've missed the first six, please go and check them out. We've done it with all the teams before Everton in the in the alphabet. So we've had Arsenal, Villa, Brighton, Burnley, Chelsea and Crystal Palace so far. And this is the series where any player on our team is available to be sold. And the team they are sold to, we then sign a replacement from, basically. And we have to see what sort of team we can have at the end of the season, see how far we can get. And there's certain ways of getting points towards the end of the season. And we just see, okay, hey, so this is how you score points. Your league position is your start number. You get a certain number of points. Minus three for winning a cup. Um, winning a cup. Two, minus two for getting to a cup final. Minus one for getting to a cup semi-final. And then if you win the European Cup, you get minus five. If you get to the final, you get minus two. If you have a player in your team become top league goal scorer, you get minus five. And then for every player in your team that you get above 15 goals, above 15 assists, or your goalkeeper gets above 15 clean sheets, you get an extra minus one. And this is golf rules, so you're trying to get the lowest number possible. This episode could be quite a fun one for me, because Everton definitely, definitely have the sort of players and the sort of money that will be good for this because they have players that will sell for quite a bit of money to quite good teams as well and also already starting out with 44 million means that I can definitely get some good players in and hopefully have a really good team come the end of this okay so I've got my first set of transfers leaving I've got Cenk Tossen going to RB Leipzig quite a big team there quite a nice team we've got Gabamin, John Philip Gabamin going to Villarreal, another big team, and then Michael Keane making his way to Crystal Palace. Not such a big team, but hopefully a team we could get somebody good from. Also, we had Gomez go to Newcastle, which I obviously deleted the email for. But, I mean, if you want me to prove it, I will, but I think you should believe me by now, because I've shown you every other one. So he went there for 23 million, so it's time to find some players to get from them teams. Okay, so we have signed the four players, and we've gone big, big, big early on. Got Raul Albiol, we've got 82 rated centre back, didn't cost me too much money because he's very, very old now. Then we signed Kevin Campbell, 81 rated centre mid, didn't cost me that much money either, 29 years of age he is, but only 81. Then we've got two big players from the Premier League, Wilfred Zaha coming in from Crystal Palace and Alan St. Maximin coming in from Newcastle. Both cost me around 35 to 40 million, so very very good signings I'm hoping them two will be hope they'll work well together and we'll see how they do okay we've got our next four sales and we've got Bernard going to AC Milan we've got Yeri Minya going to Atalanta but we've already got a player in from them called Berat Jim City he's a centre-back 78 rated I believe he is so I think that's a pretty good deal plus 4.6 for Minya and then we've got Fabian Delft going to Frankfurt Eintracht Frankfurt for 5.8 and then we've got John Joe Kenny on his way to Brighton so we need four players well three players in from the three teams that I don't already have players from okay so after we signed a few big names on the first time round we've got three not so big names this time we went for Tuta which I think is a fantastic name from Frankfurt we've got Romaric Yappi in from up Brighton 60 rated and we've got Leo Duarte from AC Milan just 71 rated centre back Okay, so I've got three more sales here for you. We've got Mohamed Besic going to Stade Brestois, 29. I think they're French team. We've got Richarlison going to Inter Milan for 55 big million. And then we've got Gilfie Sigurdsson going to AC Milan again. And Milan are a team that I had trouble getting a player from in the first place. So not looking forward to trying to get another one from them. But we'll see what sort of players we can get in. Okay, we have our three players in. We've got Sebastian Seaboys or Seaboys from, um, I don't even remember their name, Stade Brestois, I think. We've signed a massive, massive player. We've got a man coming back to the Toffees. It's a Romelu Lukaku coming in, not a cheap player. I think 67 million was the final price that I paid for him. Very, very big amount of money, but hopefully can be a man to bang the goals in. And plus, I think that Calvert-Lewin might end up leaving us in the window. Obviously, Richarlison already gone, so he will, will be needing a striker, and this man is the one to fill that role. And then finally, from Milan, we went for Simon Kier, 
basically he was one of the only people I could actually get because AC Milan value their players so highly for some reason. Even this man here cost me over 15 million. So 80 rated centre back. He could be good for me though. I think he probably will be a starting centre back unless I sign somebody else bigger and better with, with whatever else comes in. Okay, I've got two more sales just happened. We've got Mason Holgate going to Spurs. But I got offered a swap deal for Musa Suzoko, which I thought was a very, very good deal for me. Holgate being a 77 and Musa Suzoko being a 79 rated. Suzoko would be a backup centre mid for me, but what a player to have coming off the bench in my opinion. So I had to accept that one. And then we had Anthony Gordon going to FC Bayern Munich for 2.1 million. So I need to sign a player in from Bayern. Only problem is, I don't have a lot of money, so we'll have to see what sort of player we could get. Maybe get somebody somebody okay? We'll have to have a little look. Before I do anything with the Bayern Munich offer, though, I'm going to go into the first game against Chelsea. Very strong side I have out at the moment. Maximum, Zaha, both in, Lukaku obviously up front. Let's see if we can get anything out of this Chelsea game. I hope so, but I doubt it. Unluckily, no, we get a z we get a one nil loss, so not the best. But we we move on, and we see if we can do better next time. So when you get an offer from a team like Bayern Munich, you're hoping that you have enough money left over to get a big player. Sadly, I didn't. I've ended up signing Joshua Zerkzy. He's a young striker, 19 years of age, 68 rated, not too bad. Probably would be good if I was doing more than one year, but <coughs> that's who I've signed. Okay, in our second game of the season, so one of the biggest games we're going to come up against all season. Probably the best team in the league, but the team I support as well. And it's also the local derby against Liverpool. Let's see if we can get a victory in this game. It's a nil-nil. I'll take a nil-nil in that. That's a pretty good result for Everton. Okay, so we've got one more massive sign in here. We've got Lucas Digne going to Spurs for 46.8 million. It's time to get in somebody from Spurs. And so disastrously, before I can get my player in from Spurs, we're into the next game against West Ham. And I don't have a left back. So we've got Nkunku playing on the left back. So let's see if he can do me a job as we take on West Ham in this third game. It's one all, and I've got to say that goal from them more than likely came through that left back roll, as that was our weak spot. We should have really been winning that one, but oh well, we've still got plenty of time to go. And sadly, we're still waiting on our left back, uh, our Spurs signing to come in, and we've got another game now against Leicester City. I'm hoping we can get something. They've obviously not got Jamie Vardy anymore as Slimani starting up front. Hopefully that helps us out a bit. Let's see if we can get anything out of this. We do get the victory. Zaha and St. Maximin getting the goals. Lovely to get the first win in the books as we want plenty more of those. Okay, so finally we get a player in from Spurs and it ends up being Serge Aurier. Obviously we need a left back. I did try and sign Sergio Regulon, but he didn't want to come, basically, is the whole point behind that. So I've signed Aurier, and I'm hoping that Coleman can play on the left. If not, I might just play him there anyway, because I'm pretty desperate, to be honest. But Aurier is definitely a good signing to be getting in, and I hope he does well for me. And now we're on to deadline day, and... The first player to leave is Dominic Calvert-Lewin going to Inter Milan. So what a big signing that is. Calvert-Lewin's out the door. This is the reason I signed Lukaku because I had a feeling he might be leaving. And he's gone to Lukaku's old club. So, Lukaku, uh, so Lukaku's basically been swapped for Calvert-Lewin and Richarlison in that respect. We need another player from Inter. Let's see who okay. I can get. Okay, Calvert-Lewin's out the door and in through the door is Stefan de Vries. The fridge is in from Inter Milan, trying to keep things cool at the back. This will be the end of deadline day. There was a late offer for Carl John from Dortmund, but I don't think that will have gone through, so I didn't bother signing a player from Dortmund. 
it didn't it the transfer talks fell through and the window is now closed so this is the part where we start simming through the season you see the team there where are we sat we're currently 12th so not great start but hopefully with the sim we will get quite do quite well get on a bit of a roll and we'll see where we come in january i'll see you then okay so we're coming in towards the january window now and to be honest with you the high expectations i had for everton i'm not 100 percent sure that they're actually meeting them at the moment they're not not as dominant as i might have expected them to be especially with the sort of team that i've set up for them they have been winning quite a few though like right there against tottenham so they might be a bit higher up than i expected uh, than i expect them to be but we shall see a loss to newcastle see what i mean we're just losing some some games we really shouldn't be so it'd be interesting to see where we are when the january window opens i'm hoping we're top top eight would be would be okay for me I, I want top four, but I think that's probably out of reach. So we will have a look where we are. So we're sat ninth in the table, which is not that good, to be honest with you. I want to be higher than that. No wonder I've only got 66 rating as a manager. And I'm, I'm hoping it gets better than that. I really am. Like, I mean, the team that I've got out at the minute should be good enough to, to be fighting for Europa League. Albiol is going down quite considerably, so he might be swapping out for Kier. But look at this team, like, full of, like, above 80s. This should be a team that's that's really, really better than what they are at the moment. So let's see what offers we get during January, and we'll see what sort of changes we need to make. Okay, and so we're nearing the deadline day, and we've got two sales. We've got Tom Davies going to Wolves, which is a nice team. I could get somebody okay in from Wolves, somebody who can fit in the team, perhaps. And we've got Ben Godfrey going to Osasuna. And I don't know too many players from Osasuna, but I'll have a little look. It might just be a case of signing somebody for cheap. Okay, so we've got our two players signed in, and they are Ruben from Osasuna. 36-year-old goalkeeper, cost me very, very little money at all. And we've signed Johnny in from Wolves to replace Coleman. So we actually have a left-back now in the team, which hopefully is going to push our team on and start us winning some games so we can get up the league is what I'm hoping because this team is far too good to be sat 10th and that is the end of deadline day deadline day is over this is the final transfer window of this episode as well Branthwaite did sell there but he sold with just two hours left so I didn't think it was going to go through again so that is my bad the only time it's going to happen but let's see if this team now can push on and put us higher up the table than ninth, because I think ninth is quite disappointing for this team. Please let me know in the comments down below where you think we'll finish, who you think is going to be the top goal scorer, and basically where you think I went wrong. What transfers did I make that I should have been signing somebody different to be able to push this team on? That's what I want to know, because this is not good enough. Okay, so we're coming in towards the end of the season now, and not gonna lie to you the second sim has been very very good for me there's been a lot of wins it's quite clear to me that the mistake I made was playing Coleman at left back soon as Johnny comes into the team we go on win after win after win doing very very well in the second half of the season let's see if we can take Man City down on the second to last game of the season no we can't the Man City team too big for us but I'm hoping this good run that we've had has taken us up the league and giving us a real, real good position. Knock out Southampton in the final day. Yes, 2-0 victory. That's what we love to see. So, let's have a look. We finished fourth. Holy poo. I thought we would be about seventh, maybe sixth or seventh. I didn't think that we were going to have that good of a push. That is incredible. Only by three points as well. If we hadn't beat Southampton, we would not have been fourth. But there's a massive gap between third and us, so... Fourth, I'm, I'm very happy with fourth though. That's just the four points there. Let's have a look at how we've done in cups. Let me see. Let's. So the final of the FA Cup is Chelsea and Man City. Did I get to the semis? No, I didn't. How about the Carabao Cup? Oh, I lost in the final. That's so upsetting. So that's a minus two for that, though. That puts us on two points. So that's very good so far. Are we going to get into the minuses with Everton? 
Uh, nothing from these, of course. They don't get into European. So they don't matter. Let's have a look at who is the top goal scorer. Do we get minus five for that? No, we don't. Mo Salah with the top goal scorer there. Let's have a look at our stats then. Currently sat on two points. Let's see if how many people on our team got above 15 goals. We have two people above 15 goals, so that's minus two. So we're sat currently on zero, which is fantastic. Lukaku and Zaha both coming in very, very good for me there. The top assister, we've got Lukaku with just nine, so not good enough. And then how about Pickford? How many clean sheets did Pickford keep? 13, so not quite good enough. But that ends Everton on zero points for the whole thing. And that's very, very good. As remember, it's golf scores. You're trying to get as many minus numbers as you can. So for them to be on zero is very, very good as this ends this episode, guys. Thank you for watching episode 7 of the Transfer League. Please like and subscribe. And I will see you next time when we do it all again for the first promoted team, Fulham. So it'd be an interesting one. Please, guys, do not miss it. I will see you there. Goodbye.